In this Oxbridge admissions question, we're asked to show that if n is an integer, then n cubed minus n will always be divisible by 6. So we've got n in the integers, and here's our expression n cubed minus n. First thing I notice when I'm looking at this is that both of those terms are multiples of n. So let's factorise that out, and we get n lots of n squared minus 1. We can then see that in the brackets we've got the difference of two squares here. We've got n squared and 1 is obviously 1 squared. So let's split that up because that's often a useful thing to do. So we would get n times n minus 1 times n plus 1. Now if we just rearrange this order, put them in order of size, we have n minus 1 times n times n plus 1. So these are three consecutive integers. Now we can see here that if you've got three consecutive numbers, at least one of them must be a multiple of two, and one of them is going to be a multiple of three. If that's the case, if something is a multiple of two and three, it must also be a multiple of six, which would solve our problem. So let's look at this more formally. Starting with the multiples of two, well, n itself is either going to be an even number, in which case n is equal to 2p for some integer p, well if it's equal to 2p, is divisible by 2, hence our n cubed minus n is also divisible by 2 because it has n as a factor. Otherwise n would have to be odd, well then n is going to be equal 2p plus 1, again for some p in the integers, but if that's the case then n minus 1 is equal to 2p, n minus 1 is also a factor of our expression, and divisible by 2, hence n cubed minus n is divisible by 2. So we've shown that our expression will always be divisible by 2, now we need to try and do the same thing for 3. If we take a whole number and divide it by 3, then it's either going to divide perfectly with no remainder, there'll be a remainder of 1, or there'll be a remainder of 2. So in other words, we can write our n as 3q, 3q plus 1, or 3q plus 2 for some integer q. We're going to look at what happens with those three cases. So if n is equal to 3q, then n is obviously divisible by 3, and as n is a factor of n cubed minus n, our expression itself must be divisible by 3. The second case, if n is equal to 3q plus 1, then n minus 1 is going to be equal to 3q, which is divisible by 3, and again that's one of our factors, so our expression is divisible by 3. And the final case, if n is equal to 3q plus 2, then n plus 1 will equal 3q plus 3, which we can factorise as 3 lots of q plus 1, hence that is also divisible by 3, and again that means our expression must be divisible by 3. So we've shown that n cubed minus n has got both 2 and 3 as factors, but if it's got both of those then it must have 2 times 3 equals 6 as a factor, hence it's divisible by 6. We've solved the problem. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the Doing Maths channel or check out some more of my videos by clicking on the links here.